All right, guys, welcome back to the I've Gotta Leave for Work in Five Minutes PC Tech Show. <laughs> I'm only halfway joking. Anyway, there is some interesting news to talk about today, so let's get with it and get my fat heads in the way here. Okay, um, so the Intel i5 12400F is a very interesting CPU that, you know, isn't actually out there yet, but a lot of people have been speculating that this is going to be the absolute killer budget gaming CPU. And we now have some benchmarks, including gaming benchmarks that have come out. And if you're wondering, is this an engineering sample? No, this appears to be a qualification sample, which should be identical to the actual retail CPU that we see. Now these benchmarks, what are they? Where do they come from? So I'm getting this from WCCF Tech because they have at least a bit of a translation of the uh, Billy Billy like, YouTube video <laughs> that this actually is coming from. I don't speak Chinese, guys, believe it or not. Maybe some of you do and could even, you know, investigate this further, add some info in my comment section. But here's what we've got. Um, WCCF Tech seems to have screen captured the shots here where we see a 12400F, again, a qualification sample, should be as good as the actual release product up against an 11700K, an 11400F, and a 5600X. And these are in a variety of, of tests. This seems to be the uh, you know CPU Z test. I, I can read that part. That part's in English. What else do we have here? We see Cinebench. And then what do we have here? Uh, this is 3D Mark Time Spy. And then I think we also had some um, actual like gaming. Uh, tests. I'll, I'll pop out into the WCCF Tech summary of some of this because, like I said, um, I don't uh, know all of this. However, okay, Cinebench. I can definitely read this part at least. <laughs> all right. Um, it looks like in terms of single core. Notice that is single core, not multi-threading. In single core performance, we do see the 12400F uh, beating the 11700K and the 5600X and the 11400F quite handily. And we would expect that, and this is why this does so well in gaming. A lot of times games can't take advantage of all of the cores available on these chips that have a lot of cores. Um, so that's why you know you would see this beating the 11700K in gaming, is that single core performance. Now let me back out of these charts and more into the uh, WCCF Tech summary they've got here. So uh, what do we got? We got in terms of performance, the Intel Core i5-12400F pitted against the chips I just told you. It says in all, uh, all those CPUs it wins for single core performance. And then in multi-threaded tests, it's losing to the 11700K, which I would expect it to, okay? Um, because, uh, you know, the 11700K is 8 core 16 thread. Well, here we're getting 6 core 12 thread, right? So you just have more cores, and its single core, single core advantage isn't enough to overtake that completely. But in most gaming workloads, that single core is really going to gonna, gonna uh, take the win there. Because most games can't fully uh, utilize 16 threads. Um, most are really 8 tops. Okay, so um, we're seeing a 19% lead and an 11% lead um, in single-threaded, 19% faster in multi-threaded, 11% faster in single-threaded tests, right? Okay, and that's in the Cinebench R23. And in Time Spy CPU score, we see it 13% faster than the 5600X, but I think we saw it um, once again. The Time Spy chart, we were, it looks like, losing to the 11700K because I think that's, that's more multi-threaded. Neat, how about gaming? So gaming benchmarks, we've got all of them tested at 1080p. We see CSGO, where we have the 12400F 4% faster. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the average frame rate is about on par with the Ryzen 5. And then in Red Dead Redemption 2, um, it, it beats all the chips, including the 11700K. So basically, what are we seeing here? Uh, depending on how threaded the task is that you're doing and what it is specifically, you know, these will trade positions, trade blows, but it's looking like specifically up against the 5600X, which is still currently priced around that $300 point. The 12400F, which we would expect to come in at more like $200, I think is where it's supposed to come in, right? Right, guys? <laughs> um, uh, seems to be at least tying and in most situations 
situations beating it. So this is gonna be a fantastic budget chip. Very interesting, I'll link this in my uh, description if you wanna take a further look. Also along this note, um, we do see information coming out now with uh, a look at some of these chips that have not released yet, including the 12100F, the 12400F, and the 12700F. And they're coming with this new stock cooler. It seems to me to be pretty inspired by the Wraith cooler that AMD uses as their stock coolers for their chips. And guys, I have mixed feelings about this design. What do you think? I'm not, I don't know if I like these like, the different directions these little outer fins go. Like this is very bold design statement. And I think you could make a build where it looks kind of neat, but like, I don't know. Also, do you see it? <laughs> we'll see how well this cools things. I, I don't know. <laughs> but you know, if you're going for that super budget kind of, um, kind of build, great. Now we should be hearing more about these in January and um, especially following a CES uh, 2022 conference. And again, here's this, this lineup uh, that we're expecting to see here, including you know how many performance cores and efficiency cores. To be clear, that 12400F that we were talking about earlier has six performance cores going up to 12 threads with none of those efficiency cores, which honestly, in my opinion, might be kind of a good thing if you don't wanna worry about any of those like DRM compatibility issues that I think were uh, down to those efficiency cores, although I think a lot of those are being patched these days. Anyway, I'm excited. I love that Intel's really in this budget and mid-range section, just absolutely aggressive on the pricing and performance. I think this is fantastic for that end of the CPU segment. Anyway, let's move on to a few other things. Number one, HDMI 2.1 doesn't mean anything anymore, and that's a disaster, okay? So according to, I think this is coming from TFT Central, although I found the article about it here at Video Cards, they were uh, you know, asking for some clarification from the HDMI you know, authorities, governing body, whoever makes the decisions on, on what all of this stuff means and the, <laughs> the licensing and all that. And apparently it's okay to call something HDMI, HDMI 2.1, even if it isn't, as long as the manufacturers then are clarifying which HDMI 2.1 features the monitor actually supports. And I think this is an absolute disaster because like uh, HDMI 2.1 can do a lot of things that 2.0 couldn't. And that was kind of a big deal and important. And it was nice to just know, is it 2.1 or is it 2.0? But apparently that's just not a thing anymore. And I think a lot of monitors are going to now call things 2.1 that aren't, bury the details in some tiny little text somewhere on the box. And, um, you know, consumers who don't know any better are going to get basically scammed. And I think this is a disaster. And I'm wondering if this is somehow just collusion from the, you know, monitor companies who are the only people who are gonna benefit out of this is if they're able to basically scam their customers. So the overall summary of what TFT Central says is that HDMI 2.0 no longer exists. Devices should not claim compliance to, uh, compliance to version 2.0 as it's not referenced anymore. So basically you just don't call anything HDMI 2.0 anymore. It disappeared, there's only 2.1 now. Just clarify what the features are. The 2.0 features are a subset of the 2.1 features. Um, so that includes things like FRL, FRL, I can speak, the higher bandwidths, variable refresh rate, um, all of that kind of stuff. Anyway, so like basically here's this, the feature subsets, right? Where 2.1 supported all of this stuff down here that 2.0 versions didn't. And now you just, now everything's 2.1 and you just tell people if it supports those features. I don't like it, guys. I think this is bad for everybody. Now in GPU news, delays to some of the updated chips that we were expecting. The 3080 12 gigabyte is apparently possibly not coming out or at least not anytime soon. We were expecting it in January. The 3070 Ti with the 16 gigabyte capacity is also apparently delayed, but the 3090 Ti is still planning on coming out in January. Now what's going on here? I think the 3070 Ti with 16 gigabytes is planned to be a competitor to Intel's Arc GPU at the top end, which I think 
is going to be around a 3070 or 3070 Ti performance level, and I think does have a higher capacity of VRAM. Remember, the 3070 Ti only has 8 gigabytes. Oh, yuck. Anyway, so a 16 gigabyte version makes a lot of sense to compete with that, but it's apparently, uh, I think this is coming from Igor's lab, who was reaching out to uh, sources who can confirm, like, if board partners are expecting these to, like, be coming out and going on sale. And they said that they're not hearing that anymore about the 3080 12 gigabyte and 3070 Ti 16 gigabyte, but they're still hearing it about the 3090 Ti. Great. Um, how much is the 3090 Ti gonna cost, guys? <laughs> Should I try to get one of these for my graphics testing? I'd have to just blow like all of my ad revenue I've saved saved up. Would it like obviously I don't think this is worth it for like a normal person who already has a good GPU. Would you guys be interested in in gaming benchmarks on a 3090 Ti? I don't think I could earn earn back the cost in ad revenue, but hey, um might be interesting for the channel, who knows. Anyway, um so yeah, what what would we expect the pricing on this to be? Guys, I'd be shocked if I see this thing for less than $2,000 MSRP and then it sells above that. Ah, oh, crazy. Anyway, speaking of also GPUs and kind of bad news in pricing, well, this could be good news to you if you have a EVGA, specifically light hash rate RTX 3080 Ti, because apparently you can boost its crypto mining performance up to 21% with the new firmware. To be clear, this is not all EVGA GPUs, it is just the 3080 Ti, okay, uh, from EVGA. But that one can now get its uh, light hash rate firmware kind of uh, boosted uh, to give you 21% more uh, mining performance. Now, unfortunately, does that mean that other people trying to buy a 3080 Ti are now gonna have to pay 21% more because that's gonna have that impact on the, uh, the real world pricing of these things? Ah, so from my perspective, not being a miner, this is bad news. From your perspective, if you have one of these cards and you're mining on it, maybe this is good news. Um, but we've got some details down here. I'll link this in the description if this is something uh, you're interested in. Again, this is um, uh, not going to be the Founders Edition model. Will not have. For, okay, so this is so just a specific version. Okay, of the card. So. So make sure you look carefully to see if this is the version of the card that's actually supported, and there appears to be a uh, video here about that. And Anyway, I'll link that in the description. I'm not really a mining channel. Don't worry about it. And the last thing I'll mention on the GPU side of things is we saw Lenovo confirming that there's an RX 6500 XT coming out accidentally and then removing that information because apparently they listed... Um, their, uh, what is it, uh, the Legion T5 PC was listed with the 6500 XT 4GB uh, GPU. Again, I had reported on 4GB being the rumor for that, and this being, um, you know, listed and then taken down. So that's just more confirmation on something that we kind of are already expecting. Here's a nice summary of what we're expecting in terms of release date. It's coming in January, and price and performance... Uh, we don't really know the price, but obviously it's got to be less than a 6600. And, you know, we'll see what they actually sell for. And my thoughts I summarize in a different video is that the 4 gigabyte uh, sucks, except for the fact that it makes it bad for mining Ethereum, which might actually help its retail pricing on the actual market. We'll see. And I've got to get to work. So I'm going to end the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments and have an excellent day.